tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. I believe it's more relevant now than ever before because I cannot imagine having gone through the first few months and even up to now without artistic productions, without <laughs> literature online, without films, without you know the 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 entertainment provided by our fellow artists. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think that uh, practically everybody. Uh, they, they're uh, able to go through and uh, survive this pandemic through the arts by uh, finding refuge in whatever artistic products uh, that they are able to get their hands on. <laughs> the NLECPH or NLECPH was a coalition that suddenly had come together primarily because of what happened. And it actually was rather late uh, before that organization got started. It was only on April 30 that the organization got together and it was out of a need to represent many of uh, those who were in the live events industry who were yes. uh, left out uh, pre primarily because, uh, the, of course, their, their means of livelihood had to stop. Second is because they were not organized, and many of the members of our industry are freelance workers. Yes, freelance. And you know that, and you know that under the regime that our government has in terms of government benefits and all that, freelance workers are in a separate category outside of the ambit of the normal welfare benefits that regular workers can get. So True. it suddenly became necessary for uh, uh, for everybody to come together and to figure out a way to help those who were. Uh, more adversely affected to those who who had the uh, less ways of uh, coping for themselves true and uh you know i'm i'm part of that group you know i'm a freelance uh, event organizer uh, and it's really difficult and we have to find a way we cannot just sit back and think that our events industry is going to be the same it's going to be a long time before you know our, our usual professions get back on track and our clients you know resume their events plan but now there is a need to retool and and think that you know think of a new way to either express our our, our technical or our artistic proficiency and skills because uh, it, it cannot be the same as before with, with this platform that we have which is the digital platform I find that uh, we it, there's a lot of retooling needed. Yes. Uh, and what's interesting is that uh, I think the creative spirit and uh, the drive of of the Filipino art, as well as everybody involved in the, the theater industry, the artistic industry, there, there there is still that energy and that drive to find a way to find a way to cope and adapt. No, during this pandemic, which uh, somehow we're a resilient bunch and and. Um, I'm, I'm still very hopeful that uh, a lot of good will come out of this uh, collective experience. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. It's very interesting because right now, I'm damning avid for creative expression, not just in theater, in film production, in writing, in dance, in, in, you know, in music. And somehow with this pandemic, people all over the world can now access access the, the the creative product no, of, of our youth because like for instance um virgin lafes you can already log on and watch all of the plays cinemalaya just concluded the the festival so i think this is um this really is a new paradigm not in in creative expression and and for the youth for the students this poses a unique challenge yes. no? so that uh um new way or very novel approach to your uh, your system to the, to the mint system has a, probably attracted a very unique uh, crop of students or uh, uh, maybe they were looking for something different from the ordinary or the usual the mainstream uh universities that we have here because there are a number of universities and colleges that are also offering the same courses. However, in Mint, I think you have uh, um, injected a new game plan in terms of an, uh, uh, offering a different student experience. Kumbaga sa marketing, 
yung user experience no we what we right. call UI UX no the user experience is now so important but you guys have already been a step ahead of the other institutions in terms of enhancing the student experience or injecting something different and something new to the student learning experience that that's what i'd like to think and that's i think that uh, many of us in the uh, in mint would like to think that way too and uh, somehow it's been also validated by the feedback that we get from students who, who enter mint um, and the parents who who we talk to when they want their, their students to get to mint and the thing that uh, most often than not the statement that we get from them is that they got interested in mint in the first place or that they decided to put their students or the students themselves decided to go to mint because they heard it was different and they saw that it was different so in that sense uh, uh, i think that uh, um, I mean, without without saying that we're better than other schools, I think at least it makes us different. Yes, I think the differentiation strategy is uh, quite interesting in terms of your approach to arts education. And uh, it's really thinking out of the box and um, uh, not really changing the game all that much. Because I think in terms of theory, in terms of uh, the actual... Uh, the practice, no, imparting the, the 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 practice and the discipline of of theater arts, but it's the approach, it's the atmosphere, it's the experience. Because school is really an immersive experience. I, I think that the students really appreciate because they have a real world feel. It's not just book based. It's not just theory based. But it's on practical application, especially with when it comes to your courses in in theater arts, because you know acting. Um, there's a there's a very aside from the, the theoretical approaches that, that they need to learn, a lot of it is relational relationship. It's relating to the character, and I'm sure you you know, um, uh, yeah. and I'm sure your your professors and you yourself, you're you're, you're also an actor, can very easily relate to that. I, I practiced yeah. theater arts first, but I grew up in a family of teachers. My parents were teachers. I have aunts and uncles who are teachers. My sister is a teacher. Now my wow. daughter is also a teacher. So we grew up in that kind of an environment. So I suppose it's something that came naturally. Uh, it, it started with just conducting workshops and then later on. Um, I remember I, I, I started teaching um, um, practically right after I got my degree, so uh, I was in my twenties when I started teaching, and and um, in effect, I've been teaching on and off like for over thirty years now, and that yes, does yes. not, and that uh, that's I'm talking only about the the formal the formal teaching, you no, know, of the being in the academy. But other than that, it's like workshops here and there, and, uh, True. and other things. Yeah. Yes. Um, and Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on V81 Radio, Manila.